If you want me to continue with my work, it is crucial to support the channel via Patreon. Moreover, make sure to subscribe to Bobby's Perspective on Rumble. All the links are in the description box below. May Allah bless you all. All right, guys, welcome back to the channel. If you're new, my name is Bobby. Guys, very, very interesting video today. We're going to watch We Feel Like Second Class Citizens, The Rise of Islam in the UK by the channel Muslim Convert Stories. I say a very interesting video because I personally grew up in Germany and when I saw Islam rising in Germany, actually it wasn't Islam, but it was immigration, I saw it as a threat as well. I didn't feel like a second class citizen. I'm a foreigner myself. My parents come from Northern Macedonia. However, I thought that they want to Islamize Germany. They want to take over. They want to do the same as the Ottomans back in the day on the Balkan. 2014, I left Germany, I started traveling the world, I went to Australia, I went to South America, I went to Indonesia, Thailand and what not, I went across the globe and ultimately I realized, well, what I saw in Germany wasn't Islam to begin with. Those were people that were removed from Islam, they were not practicing Muslims. The people that I met did not pray, the people that I met were engaged in all kinds of degeneracy, be it fornication, consumption of drugs and what not. Therefore, I'm very curious to hear the perspective of the rise of Islam in the UK. All right, guys, with no further ado, let's have a look. The Muslim majority is getting increasingly strong and speak to ordinary Brits who, who will tell you, I just feel like second class. It's like I don't belong here. English media personality, political commentator, and one-time businesswoman Katie Hopkins is not a stranger to controversy. Apart from being a magnet for controversies as she seems to manage to corner them at every opportunity, the rise and spread of Islam in the UK would has been one of her most triggering factors. She has, at every opportunity, has continuously lashed on to every shred of news, trend, or incidents to verbally attack Islam and Muslims in the UK. I don't know this person Hiding at all. her disdain for Islam and immigrants with their vague love for white preservation to prevent the erosion of white majority and culture in the country. What she failed to realize or has chosen to ignore is the fact that white UK citizens are part of the Muslim population too. Islam has been growing gradually in the UK for decades. Yes, and this is an overlooked point, of course, because in the West, Islam is still seen as the foreigner's religion. It is something that is being introduced into Europe and has no place in Europe. This is really how the Europeans see it, because they identify as Christians. Even though nowadays they are cultural Christians, if at all, and of course not practicing Christians any longer. A better description for those people would be liberals, of course, because this is what they truly are. They follow liberal values and they follow secularism. We have a separation of church and state within those Christian countries. So how can you even call them Christian countries if church and state are separated? The church has no saying in what the liberal government will do. But be that as it may, Islam is associated with the migrants that brought their religion. And I have to do this here all the time because it is not accurate. And to be fair here, yes, we do have reverts to Islam, myself included. I come from Germany, my parents come from Northern Macedonia, and I accepted Islam this year. Alhamdulillah. However, still, reverts are a minority. And therefore, when politicians speak about the preservation of their ethnic kind, if you will, then they're of course not speaking about the Islam make reverts because it is a minority after all. However, there has been a significant growth over the last decade. A 2022 census shows that Islam has grown by about 44% over the last 10 years. The capital, London, has enjoyed the most growth to about 1.4 million of the country's Muslim population, rising from 4.9% to 6.5%. Yes, sure, but yet again, now we need to see the percentage of how many reverts play into that number and how many new births are playing into that number. And therefore, you cannot blame the politician here, I really have to take her stance on this point at least, that they have a fear of their culture changing because that is just a fact. 
the culture would change. With more and more immigration into the UK, of course, you're changing the whole demographic of that country. And therefore, yes, you're changing the culture. And this is needless to say, because if you look at the UK, if you look at London, for example, and you compare it to London 30, 40, 100 years ago, the culture changed already. The current culture is a blend of liberal multiculturalism. And therefore, it is a very, very different England from back in the day. And you cannot blame those white British people for wanting to preserve their culture. About 3.9 million generally get it. of the total population of England and Wales. After London, significant Muslim population are found in Birmingham, Luton, Bradford, Leicester, and other parts of the hinterlands. While the 3.9 million Islamic population may be made of majorly immigrants or a descendant of immigrants, a go. sizable portion are white people who have converted to the fastest growing religion in the country. The growth of Islam is also evident in another area. Yes, and this is why the right-wing politicians or conservatives, call them what you will, are doing themselves a big disfavor by attacking Islam, because that is not really their issue. Those people want to preserve the UK the way that it was. They want to keep it ethnocentric. And to an extent, I really cannot blame them. I'm in Thailand here, and I'm very happy that the majority of people in Thailand are Thai. It makes sense. If I go to Japan, I want to go to Japan because of the Japanese culture. I want to enjoy the sushi and I want to see Japanese faces that produced mangas, for example, and samurais. If I go to the United Arab Emirates, I want to see Arabic people. If I go to Senegal, the country of my wife, I want to see black people. This is just what it is. And therefore, the preservation of an ethnic kind is not really an issue here. And this is why those politicians are doing themselves a favor by attacking Islam because Islam yes has been brought to the West by immigrants fine but it is after all a religion and not an ethnicity and therefore yes absolutely as the example given in this video we do have white reverts to Islam white people that accept Islam that is fine therefore the attack should not be on the religion the theology of Islam whatsoever if you have an issue with immigration solve that politically that is the trend of most common names in the UK. Data released showed that Muhammad is the most common name in the UK for newborn sons. Okay, let me clarify this. I am a revert to Islam because I love Islam and I love the theology of Islam. I love Tawheed. I love what Islam stands for. This is why I accepted Islam. And therefore, of course, as somebody that accepted Islam, somebody that is a Muslim now, of course, we hold the Prophet in high regard, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. However, the politician still has a point because as you can see, Mohammed now is more common than Noah, Jack, Theo, Leo, Oliver, George, Ethan, Oscar or Arthur. And therefore the politician is of course correct in saying, hey, our culture is changing. They want to preserve their culture with their names and therefore Islam is a threat to it. And the most popular name in the UK in the last 12 months is... Mohammed. Mohammed. The increasing surge of Muslims in London, particularly, is more noticeable. As previously stated, more than half of newly admitted students into the school system are Muslims. An Islamic prayer center has been established in the Trocadero, one of the historic centers in London. And the current mayor of London, Sadiq Khan, is a Muslim, among many other things. Katie Hopkins, <laughs> by all means, <laughs> has a negative attitude towards us and has consistently managed to show this through her words, actions, and posts on social media. She also manages to connect individual incidents to Islam or immigrants to justify her continuous outbursts against Muslims. Yeah, and this is the main problem here because they're trying to paint everything with the same brush. As I said, admittedly, Europe has an issue with their immigration policy. That is a fact, just look it up. However, you cannot paint with the same brush when it comes down to migration and religion. The activities of the likes of Hopkins and others who share the same disposition towards Islam has not affected the positive trajectory the religion currently enjoys. If anything, it only makes them more reactionary. This is worsened by the declining Christian population in the country. The UK originally 
prides herself in being a Christian nation, but yep. has experienced declines in her Christian numbers consistently for several decades now. Yet again, the claim to Christianity is not valid at all, because in those countries you do have secularism, the separation of church and state. So therefore, if church and state are separated, the church is just an institution within the state. It's nothing that holds any authority whatsoever. It is simply an organization within the state. You can go to a church, you can go to a meditation center if you want to, you can do some yoga, or just go to the gym. It is not an authority any longer, and therefore you cannot say it is a Christian country. Over the last decade, 2011 to 2021, the UK experienced 13% decline in her Christian population from 59% in 2011 to 46% in 2021, effectively removing Christians from the majority for the first time in the history of the formation of the country as it is known today. The decline is noticed in several areas, but one of the most glaring areas is the decrease in the number of churchgoers and many of the numerous big churches 100%. in the country. And this is something so truly fascinating to me, man, because to this very day, when I speak with Christians, they tell me that they believe in Christianity, they believe in the Trinity and whatnot. But when I ask them if they go to church, the answer is no. They don't go to church. Yeah, well, I'm a Christian in my heart. Yeah, but then you cannot wonder that Christianity is declining. You're not even participating within your own church at all. And the same cannot be said about Muslims. We talked about this on my live streams. A Muslim that goes to Juma every Friday is not a particularly pious Muslim. He's just an average Muslim. Because it's normal for you to go to the mosque on Friday. However, if we speak about a Christian that goes to church on Sunday, we would say, wow, he's really practicing. He's in church every Sunday. Oh, amazing! And this is the main difference here, of course. It is just normal to participate within the mosque if you are a Muslim, and for a Christian, this is already a big deal. They rather have brunch on Sunday. This has led to the closing of some of the churches due to low or non existent attendance. To rub the insult on the injury, a few of the closed churches have been acquired and converted yep. to mosques. Alright guys, and this is it for today's video. We really need some balance here. It is very easy to just pick one side here and not look at the other perspective. You can say, well, Islam is right and therefore it shall spread in the UK and I don't care what those racist bigots say. Or you take the other side and you say, I don't care about those Muslims, the UK is for the white British, etc, etc, you name it. But the point of the story is there are half-truths on both sides, of course. First and foremost, as Muslims, we do believe that Islam is the truth. And therefore, we would love to see the UK embrace Islam, of course, no doubts about it. However, this is not about Islam, as I said. They're building a straw man, basically, pointing at Islam. Oh, Islam, bad. But ultimately, what they really want to talk about is criminal activity committed by migrants. That's really what it boils down to. And now, if you would really look into the theology of Islam and you would see what those migrants, those people do, then you would quickly realize that this has nothing to do with Islam. Quite the opposite, of course. Islam prohibits all of those problems that you see in the West. And I, of course, make the point, if we would imply a Sharia in the West, you wouldn't see any of that. Those migrants might be Muslim by affiliation through family, sure, but their behavior is not Islamic. And therefore, under Islamic law, those people would face all kinds of issues, of course. They're not facing those issues in the West because the laws in the West are absolutely laughable and invite such transgressions. Ultimately, we have to separate forced mass immigration into Western countries and Islam, because Islam is not a brown people's religion. If you look into Europe, for example, you find some Muslim countries, such as Albania or Bosnia. Those people are, of course, considered white. Or if you go up into Russia, you see Dagestan, Chechnya, etc. Those are, of course, white people as well. But what is very, very important here to understand is that those white Muslim countries adopted Islam as a whole. They did not change their population through forced immigration. And this is, of course, the threat that they see in Europe. And I cannot blame them. If the majority of the white population within the UK would organically adopt Islam, 
similar to the Indonesians back in the day, for example, nobody would have a real issue with that because the majority of the country, the majority of the ethnic people within that country would like to adopt a new religion and therefore it might even become the state religion and the whole state of UK changes into an Islamic country, etc, etc, you name it. But this is not really what the politician talks about. But either way, this is a very nuanced discussion. We could talk about this for hours. We could talk about the liberal value system within that country country that allows freedom of religion. Therefore, you cannot complain about different religions. Or we could talk about the past, the history of colonization and vice versa. So therefore, there is no quick fix solution to the issues at hand. Honestly, the only solution I can think of is that the white reverts within the UK display Islam in a beautiful way, in a positive light, and show the population that Islam is not a religion for the brown people, that Islam is not an ethnic centric movement but quite the opposite it is a beautiful way of life islam came to perfect our character and this is why it is crucial to display this as white reverts however and i have to repeat this i grew up in germany and i saw people that i associated with islam they were not practicing as habib said non-muslims do not read the quran or hadith they read the muslims and so therefore if those muslims behave in a certain way they give a bad image to Islam. And now I let you think about if this is a sin or not. All right, guys, and this is it for today's video. If you liked it, leave it a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed already, guys, please do so. And if you want to further support this channel via Patreon, for example, all the links are in the description box below. Thank you so much for your ongoing support, guys. And as always, may God bless you all. Much love and peace.